All right. So um, let's get started with the second part. Uh, we were discussing about the uh, insurgency in Ache. And uh, because of that insurgency, more than uh, 15,000 people, 18,000 people, I think they, they were killed in that violence uh, in Indonesia, in Aceh. So ultimately, Aceh in 2004 suffered huge setback because of the tsunami. And it was a blessing in disguise uh, for Indonesia. So because of that tsunami, you know, most of the population in, in Aceh province devastated and uh, they had to you know, resort to peace with the Indonesian government. Uh, and in return, the Indonesian government, they developed this region again. And as you can see in this slide that uh, before uh, you know, um, um, tsunami, it was you know, a very developed area, very settled area. And after tsunami, it was totally devastated. Uh, so now uh, the Indonesian government, uh, they carried out, you know, um, massive reconstruction and development in that region. And now this region is again, um, you know, in good position. So uh, Aceh peace deal under the agreement, it was partial autonomy was granted to Aceh. Uh, the rights to retain about 70% of the province considerable oil and gas revenue. So this is what they demanded. And uh, they, they, they wanted, you know, autonomy in many areas. Uh, under the agreement, the Free Aceh movement uh, disarmed in, in December 2005. So the uh, terrorist organization, which was you know, fighting against the Indonesian government, they, they disarmed themselves and they put their arms and they surrendered. As the Indonesian military uh, you know, dramatically reduced its presence in Aceh. And of course, the Indian, uh, Indonesian military also, um, they had to uh, replace with the um, uh, local police, local forces. The ongoing conflict in West Papua, the third major insurgency is ongoing. The Timur Leste and uh, Aceh insurgencies are over. Now the peace is you know, restored there. But the West Papua is still uh, facing this issue and this insurgency is still ongoing. Again, Indonesia uh, is you know, focusing on its own you know, uh, area, number one, number two, for resources there in that region. So they want to control that region with power. So the ongoing conflict in West Papua between the indigenous um, Melanesian uh, people of the region and the security forces of Indonesia, more than 400,000 people have been killed so far. So this is, uh, you know, horrendous in modern times. 13,500 Papuan refugees, they live in exile in neighboring independent state of Papua New Guinea, uh, which is, you know, uh, independent now. So uh, the West Papua, uh, you know, it is now facing the problem. And um, this region is important uh, for resources, of course, and because of its location uh, and uh, this India, you know, Indonesia is not letting go of this region. It is an ongoing low level conflict between the Indonesian government and portions of indigenous populations of West Papua. So small amount of, you know, people, they are fighting against the Indonesian subjugation. And since the withdrawal of the Dutch colonial uh, administration from the, uh, you know, Netherlands, New Guinea, uh, in 1962, the implementation of Indonesian governance in uh, 1963 and the formal absorption of West Papua into Indonesia in 1969. So now the Indonesians are controlling this region since 1969. And they have enslaved the local population there. And these people are, you know, uh, forced to live in a very, very uh, difficult situations. So uh, nobody is there to, you know, ask these people. Nobody is going to uh, help these people because Indonesia is well connected in the region and they are also well connected globally. So militancy in West Papua, uh, since then the Free Papua Movement, uh, a militant uh, independent uh, organization has conducted a low level guerrilla warfare against the Indonesian state. They are targeting the Indonesian military and police as well as the engaging in the kidnapping of both non papuan Indonesian settlers and foreigners. So uh, it's a you know, very small level conflict, uh, low level conflict which is going on. And Indonesia is very powerful to quell and to control this insurgency. In 1962, the Dutch agreed to relinquish the territory to a temporary United Nations administration, signing the New York Agreement, which included a provision of a plebiscite before 1969. The Indonesian military organized this vote called the Act of Free Choice in 1969 to determine the population's views on the Papua and West Papua's future. The result was in favor of integration into Indonesia because it was controlled 
uh, you know uh, voting and it was controlled referendum which uh, indonesian government manipulated actually in violation of the agreement between indonesia and the netherlands only involved you know 1025 hand picked people who were forced at gunpoint to vote for the integration with indonesia and which has resulted in you know problem because the the population uh, genuine population was not given chance to decide about their future and this is the reason now the people are fighting against the indonesian government so much less than you know one uh, person of the those who have been you know eligible to vote so ab ek person log they can't decide about the you know lives of about 99 uh, person people so this was the issue you know outside of america is silent over west papua and it is obvious uh, why because uh, uh, on the other hand the us has a strong interest in reaching out to the islamic world because indonesia the largest uh, muslim population can help the us achieve its its interest in the muslim world and indonesia is their friend so that's why they are silent and now uh, india uh, indonesia is working uh, the us is working with indonesia as a partner in the war against militancy and terrorism uh in southeast asia and other parts of the world and thirdly uh, a comprehensive strategic partnership to fulfill geopolitical interest of america in southeast asia against china so because of these three reasons indonesia um, and america is not you know um, uh, forcing indonesia uh, to uh, end this uh, you know subjugation of west papua and obviously um, um, you know american interest um, are there so this is west papua this is the position of west papua in the pacific ocean region you know it is an important area and uh, it also possesses huge amount of oil and gas resources and then it also has got you know uh, natural gas uh, mining fisheries of course and uh, you know uh, gold so central to conflict is, in papua is its vast natural wealth and most of which stems from natural you know resource extraction industry particularly mining logging and offshore natural gas drilling fisheries of course are another potentially valuable resource papua and west papua are two of indonesia's poorest provinces despite their extensive natural resources wealth so why because this wealth is not helping these country these areas under the special autonomy law for papua in of 2001 70% of the oil and gas royalties and 80% of the mining forestry and fisheries royalties are supposed to go to the province the um, grassberg mine operated by you know freeport indonesia a subsidiary of louisiana based freeport macmoran is the world's largest gold mine and is one of the largest copper mine in the world despite all these resources this region is suffering so this is the uh, you know picture of that particular gold mine which is there and uh, the indonesians are extracting resources with the help of the united states of america and uh, you know the people of the, the local population is suffering uh, then of course uh, the precious pearls uh, they are also found in this area and uh, this is also part of their mining industry and uh, they also uh, you know uh, utilize this for their national exchequer indonesia and the us relationship this is a very important uh, part of this lecture um, United States of America, as I told you before, it is very active in East Asia, in Southeast Asia. They are based in Okinawa, Japan, and just to protect their interest in this region, just to protect their allies in this region from Iran, uh, from South uh, North Korea, from China, from other 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 aggressive countries in the region. So ASEAN um, Association of Southeast Asian, uh, you know, uh, nations is America's fourth largest overseas trading market, and home to about 153 billion dollars. in us investment so this is something which united states of america can never ignore as i told you before that this region southeast asia is about 600 million population which is a huge market for the us you know um, products so automatically um, it is uh, you know 153 billion dollars us investment is there in this region and of course you know united states of america can never leave this region Indonesia is ASEAN's largest economy as i told you before it's a trillion dollar economy but it is only america's 30th largest trading partner today uh, 81% of indonesians hold a favorable opinion of the united states so most of the people in indonesia they have got good views of the us 
Whereas in Pakistan, if you ask this question, most of the people are against America. Uh, why Indonesia is important for the United States of America? Uh, Indonesia is, uh, you know, world's largest archipelago, sitting along a vast arc between the Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, and the South China Sea. So it, it's located in a very, very peculiar position. And United States of America want to secure see these sea, sea lanes of communication, want to have their interest protected in this region. The economic engines of East Asia rely on the, you know, these sea lanes to, you know, supply vital fuel, energy, and resources. So this is the reason that the United States of America believe that it has to have good ties with the Indonesian, uh, Indonesians. 80% um, of China's oil imports flow through the Strait of Malacca, as I told you before. And percentages for Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan are even higher. And most of these countries, like Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, they are friends of America. And America want to ensure that these countries get uninterrupted supplies of oil and gas from the Persian Gulf, from the African region. Ensuring the openness and stability of these vital lanes, therefore, it is the vital interest of the America um, uh, allies as well as those of the broader international community. So America want to protect these sea lanes of communications uh, for their allies and flow for their uh, friends around the globe. As you can see in this map as well, that uh, you know um, China's crude oil imports by sea 82% and China's natural gas by 30%, it passed through the state of Malacca and then it goes to China uh, through South China Sea. But other countries, uh, they are also relying on this region. And um, that's why it is very important region for the Americans. The US uh, has you know, global interest while Indonesia's interests are primarily internal and regional. As I told you before, Indonesia is not facing any external threat like North Korea is facing threat from the US. Um, but Indonesia is not facing any such threat. In their threats, their interest, their problems are more related to non-traditional security threats. Uh, so that's why they are, you know, collaborating with the U.S. America is facing challenges in the face of the proliferation of WMDs worldwide. For example, uh, North Korea, for example, they believe, uh, you know, they never accepted, uh, you know, Pakistan as well, uh, that Pakistan uh, is a Muslim country with nuclear weapons. Uh, they are also, you know, very much concerned about the Iranian nuclear program. So America is facing, you know, these challenges. Uh, threats from the rogue states, they believe. Uh, they call North Korea, Iran as a rogue state. And uh, transnational terrorism, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and all sorts of groups which can or which has the ability to carry out attacks uh, transnationally on America or their European allies. So both states, uh, you know, share seven important mutual interests. So their interests, you know, uh, you know uh, revolve around these seven points. Number one, Regional stability and prosperity. They believe that this region uh, must be, uh, you know, uh, open. This must, uh, the Chinese should not, you know, block this region. Chinese should not influence these countries. And China must, you know, uh, act under the, uh, under the law, international law. Uh, so they believe that the counter, you know, uh, the sea lanes of communications are open. Uh, they, they cooperate with each other in countering terrorism. They carry out, you know, military exercises, drills to counter ISIS, Al-Qaeda, or any other transnational group, for example, Jama Islamiyah, which is there in Indonesia. So they, they believe they work uh, for the regional stability and prosperity. Uh, secondly, natural uh, security, um, uh, that is also important. I think this is national security, not natural security. So that is also a very important thing uh, for both of them. Uh, for example, the uh, Indonesian national security is paramount for them. And uh, the Americans are also, you know, trying to protect their national security uh, just to protect uh, their interest in this region. Regional security architecture, uh, the regionally, how they are, you know, working together just to control uh, countries like uh, North Korea, aggressive state like, you know, North Korea. And of course, to mend ties uh, between North Korea, Japan, South Korea. And of course, uh, just to maintain peace and security in this region. Secondly, um, um, uh, both countries also, you know, work towards democracy uh, and human rights, of course, uh, because uh, both believe in this particular thing. Global mediation, of course, Indonesia played a very important role in global uh, issues, like, for example, uh, Afghan peace process. They played a very important role in persuading Taliban 
and um, they also carried out many negotiations with Taliban just to bring them on board and just try to resolve this issue. Uh, of course, counterterrorism, maritime cooperation, all these things are there as we have already discussed. Uh, I have given some details as well, which you can read later on and you will understand their uh, issues and problems. Um, natural security Natural security ka matlab hai environmental security, non-traditional security threats. आगे मैंने इसको एक्सप्लेन कर दिया हुआ है जो भी नॉन ट्रेडिशनल सिक्योरिटी एस्पेक्ट के थ्रेट्स होते हैं ना आपको जैसे रिसोर्सेज हैं बायोडायवर्सिटी है एनर्जी है क्लाइमेट चेंज है सो दे दे वर्क टुगेदर जस्ट टू रिजॉल्व दिस इश्यूज अदर देन दैट दे आर पार्ट ऑफ यू नो रीजनल सिक्योरिटी आर्किटेक्चर एज वेल एंड दे कलेक्टिवली कोलैबोरेट एंड दे कैरी आउट यू नो मैरीटाइम surveillance and uh, you know of, an observation of the area just to protect uh, you know countries uh, their trade and uh, uh, fight against piracy and all that and uh, indonesia's democracy has proven remarkably resilient so uh, but uh, both states also promote these type of issues uh, it's a very common thing for the us global mediation as i told you before indonesia to host taliban at her one peace talks so their role is also very important and they have been doing all these things uh, as part of their global mediation um, efforts so they were also involved in many other areas especially you know uh, syria iraq and afghanistan because they are the you know largest muslim uh, country in the world with huge population with huge setup ulamas and all these things so that's why the us uh, you know uh, plays a very important role uh, in persuading this uh, particular country to uh, bring all these varying groups on the negotiating table uh, counter terrorism is uh, one such uh, important factor which is uh, you know common interest of the us and indonesia and uh, indonesia is facing threats from jama islamia a militant organization uh, which has you know uh, also uh, links with islamic state and previously they were linked with al qaeda as well so indonesia malaysia the southern philippines singapore and brunei all these countries are working together just to you know um, counter this particular threat um a major terrorist attack uh, occurred in 2002 at bali as i told you before and in that group uh, that attack uh, more than 200 two people were killed in that particular uh, attack and that was a huge attack on um, on indonesia so after that indonesia started you know you know very uh, comprehensive you can say campaign against counter terrorism with the support of us and local countries regional powers and after that both countries the uh, you know, america and indonesia uh, they tried you know uh, they had gone for you know effective operations against militant organizations and of course uh, both countries uh, are also cooperating with each other in counterterrorism indonesia got uh, many such capabilities by the us just to you know uh, improve their counterterrorism uh, cooperation and counterterrorism capabilities maritime cooperation uh, is important uh, between both countries just to protect their sea lanes of communications um, because this huge area in the indian ocean and south china sea is very important and um, just protect these sea lanes of communication uh, from any piracy attacks from any other issues they work together so 75% of the indonesian territory is water with a vast potential yet to be untapped so um, this cooperation with the us is very important because uh, their uh, military their navy is uh, not that uh, big which can counter which can you know overcome these challenges which the indonesians are facing in the vast indonesian indian ocean or uh, pacific region uh, naval capacity of indonesia is also uh, you know good they are um, it has recently procured um, you know six attack helicopters they also got some uh, submarines and they are also getting you know aircraft so these capabilities would uh, of course shore up their naval capabilities their military capabilities and automatically they are going to improve their overall capabilities however indonesia's navy and coast guard are undersized with uh, 30 principal surface combatants because they are they are having about 17000 islands so uh, these capabilities are very small as compared to their own 
maritime boundaries. So uh, they need more and more the such resources uh, just to overcome these issues uh, which they are facing in the modern times. A long-term objective of the US uh, you know, Indonesia partnership in this regard should be to develop Indonesia's naval capacity. So this is what they are doing. So United States of America is helping Indonesia to achieve uh, you know, uh, capabilities, to get capabilities to uh, control areas under their control. So that's the aim behind being, you know, uh, for both these countries. So in a nutshell, let me conclude on this point that Indonesia is a very important country in Southeast Asia. And uh, the location of Indonesia is such that it is located between the South China Sea and Indian Ocean region. And of course, it is, uh, you know, Pacific region is also there, ocean is also there. So uh, because of its position, because of the sea lanes of communications from this region, Strait of Malacca, Sunda and Lombok Straits, uh, this region holds very much, you know, importance. And for United States of America, this, region, this country is important because United States of America share many mutual interests with this country. So um, this country is uh, pursuing very balanced approach in their foreign policy and defense policy. They are cultivating good ties with China and United States of America, and they are active uh, player in the global affairs. They are trying to negotiate with Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, and other countries, and trying to resolve these issues and you know through negotiations and through peaceful you know settlements. So this is what uh, for today, guys. Uh, thank you very much for your patience. And if you got any question, please do ask. I will upload this lecture as soon as possible, so you'll have the access to your lecture as well. Thank you very much. You, if you got any question, you can ask please now.